Hi, my name is Gary Johnston. I'm a science teacher at Saigon South International School in Ho Chi Minh City. And what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to use the project grouping feature within the Doctopus add-on, which is a new feature of spreadsheets. Uh, the old uh, Doctopus used to be uh, in the Tools tab underneath the Script Gallery. But uh, with this new feature, there's been some new improvements to Doctopus I want to share with you. And I was looking online and saw that there wasn't any videos on uh, project grouping, so I thought it would be pretty fun uh, to show this. I actually started making this for a project that we're doing, but I thought uh, just for this hack I'd show you uh, how I was using it in the science classroom. Uh, anyways, we're near the end of the school year, and um, some of our individual lessons uh, have focused around the, the large uh, topic, the history of the world. And we've had lessons regarding, for example, Earth's interior, the rock cycle, what are different types of rocks, uh, how, how fossil evidence has supported uh, how life changes over time, uh, the loss of position, earthquakes, and continental drift. And as part of a, a differentiated sort of jigsaw approach to this, the students, um, and we've had a lot of formative assessment along the way, are, have signed up to kind of focus on one of these strands really in depth and create a digital story on it along with some science content. So the students have signed up and uh, all indicated what they want to work on. Some of them are thinking about, you know, what are the tools they want to use, but some of them still are kind of mulling around with some of the ideas. So what, what Dr. Bush says is a file distribution system, but um, with this and what I want to demonstrate how to use it today for is I want to demonstrate, for example, how to share one document with these two people so they are collaborators on the same document. So this is different than, like, for example, individual, all the same. And uh, I'm just going to walk you through the process on a blank spreadsheet. As I, said, I started doing this, but that would be pretty fun to do a tutorial. So I'm going to go to the add-ons, and when you drop down here, uh, if you don't see Doctopus up here already, go to the Get Add-ons, and I've already installed it, so I'm just going to hit Launch. And once I do, uh, Doctopus pops up uh, on the right side here, and you'll see it selects roster. And how do you want to do it? Um, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can actually import these from uh, old spreadsheets. You can uh, build a new roster, and I'm just going to use this today uh, because the first time you do this, you might actually have uh, copy and pasting, uh, you know, spreadsheets from, for example. Um, some sheets into new sheets. But you can also import them from, for example, G-Class folders if you've made those, or also from the, uh, it's like the Hapsara uh, teacher dashboard. And um, now that I'm just going to hit create roster. And once I do this, there's going to be a, a few new headings that pop up on the left side over here. One's like first name, last name, and email address. And so what you have to do for this is have, uh, as I said, some sort of roster. And since I've already done this, I'm just going to copy and paste all these cells in to make it really easy. Bada bing, and go like that. Okay. So I pasted all my names and just make this cell a little bit bigger here so it captures that. And now that I've done that, I'm going to hit refresh now that everything's in there. So uh, the spreadsheet is the primary sort of launch destination, and uh, if you're in a school domain that's using Google Apps, uh, this is also one of the great features of this. Uh, I could also hit uh, class, class folders, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call this uh, Digital Stories uh, G Block. And save roster and continue. And this cool new little graphic pops up on the right side. It says successfully save roster. So you got that, and you can also access that for reference later. This brings us to the type of sharing, and I think most people when they start using Doctopus, they use individual all the same, which is great, but instead, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna create um, project groups, and I'm gonna, it, it might look a little clunky at first, but I'll explain um, what happens with this. It brought, brings up an exclude tab, and it says right here, what do you wanna do hold class uh, level access? and you can do a whole class, for example, the ability for the whole class to edit, or to comment, to view only. But actually here I'm just going to put no access. And the reason is because usually when you run Doctopus with individual, uh, individual, for example, groupings, uh, all the same, um, it takes, I'd say, roughly about four seconds to share one document uh, per student. The problem with sharing and giving a huge groups access and commenting rights although I do think that's great for peer editing, is it takes a long time because, for example, if you have a class of, like, say, 60 students, and you give everyone, for example, commenting only, each student will have their own document that they can work on, 
but then it'll then beam out 59 other copies into all the other students' inboxes. And so it, it can be a little bit clunky and it can over inundate uh, students with a lot of documents. So what I'm just going to do today is say no access. Even though they're working on groups, uh, I might have them share this with a couple of individuals uh, for process writing. But today I'm just going to do no access also because it takes a long time and I want to keep this tutorial pretty, uh, pretty succinct. Um, everyone can edit this and also I'm just going to say that people cannot share sharing permissions. I'm actually un going to unclick that because uh, I want students to be able to share it with individuals. Uh, also if you have student folders to share it to you can do that. And if you also teach with a co-teacher or maybe have uh, an ESL teacher, learning support teacher, you can pop their names in here. Um, I think I'm going to have the students share this with those teachers later on. Uh, I'm just going to save and continue. Now, another thing has happened since um, I've run this, and if you look, there's this new tab here called Group. And so what this means, and it, it just by default, clicks out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so it clicks out seven groups that are just named uh, by letter. And what that means is, like, for example, the student here that's in Group A, and there's a student here in Group A, and a student here that's in Group A, it'll create one document that these three students are all working on collaboratively. So it's not three separate documents, it's just one. And personally, the, the, the grouping just by the letter is pretty generic, and I think it's not very telling. In fact, it may not be very informative to the students. So uh, I've already done this ahead of time, so I'm just going to copy um, my, my group sort of flags on the different signups that they're going to be doing. So I'm just going to copy these into my group uh, sort of column here. So for example, you know, this student here uh, is working on a project on igneous rocks with this student here. Um, this person here is working on uh, what causes earthquakes uh, with their partner here. And it's also important that these are spelled the same. So what you should do is, you know, once you know like what students are going to be working on what together, I think the best way to do it is to pop the name in here and then just copy and paste the whole cell in here and here and here. That way if there's little typos and Doctopus will recognize this, um, it hopefully will, will minimize that. Uh, the next thing it does is say uh, choose a folder that you want holding the assignment. And um, when you're working with Doctopus, it's good to have all the files and spreadsheets in a folder that is nice and easy to find. And that just makes um, it a lot easier for you. Um, you can also access these links from the spreadsheet later on, but um, I've actually already made this uh, tab here, and I've already made a folder in my drive, um, just popping up right here. It's called Digital Story Draft. So inside here, um, this is where my assignment template is going to be, and it's just a Google Doc. And uh, once I hit that, uh, what's going to pop up in this little white window here is um, how do you want this distributed? And so this is also something that you can do, which I think is a bit of a, a bit of a merge of, you know, project groupings but also differentiate assignments. And what I've done is this this document that I have is called Digital Story Draft Earth's History, and it's also indicated like what type of files is it is it a Google spreadsheet or is it a document. But this is also particularly handy if, for example, you want to differentiate the projects by having, for example, different documents. And this is something that I, I really hope to explore next year as I have some more time to create differentiated resources where, for example, in some science labs, I might have a little reading warm-up uh, at the top of the lab that is geared towards their reading levels based on Lexile scores from map test data. And so what you could do is create this document, but maybe differentiate it for ability. Oh, why is this thing keep coming up? And that's just cool because uh, that way it tailors that to a ability that is just above that student's zone of proximal development. But I'm just going to go down and click um, this document, Digital Stories. So these are all the different groups that you can see are labeled here. And I'm just going to share the same document with them. But they're going to have kind of collaborating uh, access on it. When I do that, hit Save and Continue. Sometimes when you click these arrows, the Save and Continue button does not pop up. And I find it's just a little, a little glitch. Sometimes what I found is uh, what, what changes that is if you just go back and you click a different document and then you go back to that one, it does pop up. So what this means is now all the files that, that are going to be made here are going to be saved in that folder that I've designated. I'm coming to the end of this too. And uh, we're in the last few steps here. So the last thing we're going to do is uh, choose how do you want this named. Now, 
The group, uh, and you'll also look here, these little dollar signs with like words here. The group is particularly handy because I want to know specifically what, what group is going to, uh, uh, how to label these documents. And doc document labeling is a real pain sometimes if you just give students the ability to copy a document and then share it with you. Because they never, they never seem to <laughs> name it the way you want. So I'm going to call this uh, Digital Stories. Oh, they taught me how to spell. Digital Stories. Uh, G block, and you notice this little dollar sign group is pops up here. And what this means is that Doctopus will take whatever is in this group column and automatically uh, name it um, with whatever is under the group heading. So, for example, uh, this person here, Sophie, uh, her group is Igneous Rocks. So her her document will be titled Digital Stories G Blocks Igneous Rocks. Um, I also, if I want to, I think I'm just going to do this for fun. Uh, I'm just going to put also their first name here. So, for example, that girl Sophie, her her document is going to be titled Igneous Rocks, and then there's going to be her name after it. And I'm going to notify the students that I'm sharing this. I'm going to say um, our rough draft. Oh, obviously, I'm not an English teacher for digital stories. And I'm also going to personalize this a little bit by saying dear, and then I'm just going to copy and paste that first name thing in here. Um, you and your partner will use this to draft your digital story. Don't start using your tools. When I say tools, as some students have indicated already, like iMovie and Powtoons and stuff like that, um, until we've had some editing through Writer's Workshop. Okay. Mr. J and get rid of that I right there. Okay. So now that I've done this, um, what I've done is it says C assignment folder, and what I'm going to do is oh sorry I didn't do this. The the folder that that um, I'm going to have this saved into just asking you, you know, where do you want these these documents saved. So I'm starting to go back and do this again. Okay, and the, the first time it asked me where is the document that I wanted to share, and now it's asking where do I want to put the files that I share and distribute with the students, and actually I'm just going to select the same one, um, and it looks like, oh, do I have to do that again? Oh, wait, no, okay, looks like I might have to, okay. So the thing that looks like it's just like reloading like that, so sorry I have to redo that again. My bad. Okay, digital stories, G block. And then also first name. Okay. And so if you select the save and continue button is now uh, pressable, and it won't it won't um, allow you to hit save and continue unless all these fields are met. So if if this is blank, obviously like mine just was, uh, that's probably because something was not selected or indicated in Octopus. So the the first few times you do it. Um, might be a little bit weird. I've only used this new Doctopus version since the the new add-ons version came to Sheets about three weeks ago. So I've only used this about three or four times. And this is my first time using this with project groupings, but I think it's really a cool feature. I'm just gonna do this again. Uh, yo, uh, our draft for our digital story. And since you guys already heard my script before, I'm just gonna make this a lot simpler and not in the you make this longer than it needs to be. Uh, we'll use this for our drafts on Friday. And sorry, sorry about the inconvenience, folks. And um, this is coming to the to the kind of the final step with this. And the last few steps are I just ask you to look over this and make sure does this look how you want it to. So in fact, I have project groups. Everyone has no access. Uh, no one has allowed edit. And I've shared the same document with all these groups as you can see here on these two columns, but you can differentiate this by, by using different documents uh, for different groups. Like maybe, for example, you want some funky sort of template uh, for this group and you want uh, a different sort of set of resources for this group and this group and this group and this group. So that's like what you can do with the project uh, feature there. And finally, uh, last thing is I'm just going to run copy and share. Um, when you share individual documents, uh, as I said, it usually takes about 
four seconds or so. But for um, this today, and also depend on the speed of your internet, uh, it can go a little bit longer. But what will happen is, is there will be a, um, a file key that is uh, copied and pasted over here. And what you'll see is you see one at a time, all of a sudden these documents just go down and down and down. Also, it uh, looks like my internet's quite slow, so that'll, that'll you know, kind of be a problem as well. But um, when this is done successfully, it'll just kind of roll down the line, and you'll see these files just uh, transfer down here. So yeah, my, my internet just timed out there, so you can see all of a sudden there's a big wave of these right here. And you can see just one at a time, um, these are now I think popping in. But um, what's really cool about the Octopus in, in such a time saver is that the live link to these documents is right here and here and here. So you don't have to go into your drive or you know what's shared with me. And this is where I think you know conventional file sharing, like for example, um, if you just give students documents and make a copy and share it with me, this can take a really long time, and you're spending often like, you know, 11 or 10 mouse clicks just finding the document. And uh, what this does on this, just because it's on the spreadsheet right here, all these documents are right here, and it says all the resources successfully shared. Click continue to explore Octopus and the management options. So I'm just going to close this right now, and as you can see, um, if I click like this, Josiah is here and his partner here, who is down below. Um, what I see with this document, and this is just kind of a rough draft that we're going to be using, is that this document here will be the same. It's also named the way I want it, so it says Igneous Rock. So immediately I know that or this, this dude knows what his topic is. He's going to copy and paste some of the science content um, in here later. But what he's going to do is he'll have access to it as his partner here also has access to it. So that's his, and then um, that's that. So what you see is um, this is the beauty of Doctopus and also features of Doctopus if you have used it already is that the management tools are great. You can send personalized emails to students about this project. Also as you grade work like this, you put maybe some written feedback, you can send them all uh, written feedback that's emailed them um, in very specific ways. It's very tailored to the sort of project that they did. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this hack and have a good one.